Okay, here again, here's the reminder. The volume of a prism is the area of the base times the height. Capital B stands for area of the base. That's so we can adjust it for whatever the shape of our base may be. This picture is, the base is a triangle. In this picture, the base is a rectangle. And in this one, the base is a square. And they all have different formulas for their area. So that's why we just do area of the base times the height. Now the height is the distance between the two bases, the two congruent figures, okay? They also provided a specific formula for rectangular prisms and a specific formula for the volume of cubes. You can use this formula for all of them. In fact, that's what these are. They're just a little more specific. So let's find this, air, this volume. The area of the triangular base of this prism is 15.6 centimeters squared. Okay, so they gave us the area of the base. That's our capital B. Find the volume. So we know we need formula for volume of a prism. Okay, so the volume equals the area of the base times the height for a prism. Okay, now they gave us the area of the base this time. We don't have to calculate any of that. So here was our base. It was a triangle with one side length six. It would have been difficult to find its area or would have caused some work because we would have had to find the height of the triangle and then find the area. But we don't have to. They gave us the area of the base already. It is 15.6. So now all we need is the height. Again, the height is the distance between the two bases. Okay, so there's a base and there's our base. The distance between those is 18. So find our volume. We do 15.6. times 18. We do, we get 280.8, and this was in centimeters, the cubic centimeters. All right, <clears throat> here we have a prism again. Um, its bases are hexagons. Um, it says the area of this hexagonal base of this prism is 127.3 square meters. So here's our base. They gave us the length of one side of the base, but again, um, hexagons have a pretty complex formula for their volume, for their area, excuse me. So I'm glad we didn't have to find it ourselves. They just went ahead and told us the area is 127.3. Okay. Again, we're finding the volume of a prism, okay? So our volume is the area of the base times the height. They gave us the area of the base. They said it is 127.3. All we have to do is put in the height, which the height, the distance between the two bases is 10. Put that in and go ahead and multiply them. And I get 1,273, and this would be in cubic meters because it's volume. All right, John wants to break the record. So your question is going to tell you about the largest ice cream cake. Okay, John wants to break the record, so he's going to make a bigger one than that. So these are different numbers than you have, but it'll show you the process. He wants to make a cake with dimensions that are approximately 22 feet by 10 feet by 4 feet. Okay, so he is making a, an ice cream cake. That's the shape, it's the shape of a rectangular prism. Okay, so. Let's say this is our ice cream cake. Its dimensions, again, are 22 feet by 10 feet by 4 feet. So those are the dimensions of this ice cream cake that John is going to try to make to break the record. They want us to estimate the volume of the ice cream in gallons. And they do give us a hint that a gallon is 0.134 cubic feet. So we first, here are our dimensions are in feet. So before we can give an answer in gallons, we have to find the volume in feet then convert that to gallons. 
So let's get started. Let's find the volume of this rectangular prism. Remember the volume of a rectangular prism is the length times the width times the height. That's the formula they gave us. We just plug those numbers in. So we have 10 times 22 times 4. And that gives me 880 cubic feet, which is my volume, but it's not my answer because they wanted the answer in gallons of ice cream. So 880 cubic feet, we need to change that to gallons. The ratio they gave us is that one gallon is the same as 0.134 cubic feet. So let's set that equal to if we have 880 cubic feet, notice I lined it up. When we did ratios, we line it up. Feet were on the bottom, feet are on the bottom, and I don't know how many gallons. So that's my x, and I'm going to solve this. Remember, now this is quite a while ago, but remember when you have a proportion to solve, you cross multiply. Leave the equal sign in the middle. So we get 880 times 1 is just 880. <clears throat> equals 0.134 times x. We want to solve that. So what would we do to solve it? I'm going to move it up here. Sorry, I ran out of room. Kind of crummy way to end up. But we get 880 equals 0.134 x. And we want to find out what x is. How would we solve that? Well, it's times 0.134, so we need to do the opposite and divide by 0.134. When we do, we get an answer for x. It is 6,567 um, gallons. <laughs> that is a lot of ice cream. <laughs>